Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I have mentioned Tiwanaku in a number of videos over the years, but I've never taken a deep dive into this ancient settlement on the banks of Lake Titicaca. As many of you may know, Tiwanaku is a pre-Columbian site in western Bolivia, one of the largest archaeological sites in South America. In my recent series of videos I've talked about a megalithic culture, a people who moved across the world through time, building magnificent megalithic and monolithic structures. It seems that the final leg of their journey took them from Cusco in Peru, all the way to the Polynesian islands including Easter Island, but as far as New Zealand. But before building at Cusco, it is believed that this megalithic culture were the ones that built Tiwanaku, and this is the ancestral home of the Peruvian megalithic builders. So, in this video, I'm going to introduce this incredible megalithic site and take a look at the earliest written account by Spanish chronicler Pedro Cesar de Leon. The remains of Tiwanaku cover around 4 square kilometres, and excavations have found huge monumental structures, megalithic blocks of stone and decorated ceramics, with a population that peaked around 800 AD, with estimates of 10,000 to 20,000 people living there. Interestingly, some believe that Tiwanaku's modern name relates to the Amara term Te Piccola, meaning stone in the centre, alluding to the belief that it lay at the centre of the world. In my previous video, I explained how both Cusco in Peru and Easter Island were known as the navel of the world, which implies that these later settlements were also viewed as the centre of the world. This is interesting because the ancestors of Cusco are believed to have come from Tiwanaku, so maybe the tradition of the place name continued on as the megalithic culture moved from place to place. Like the Inca and pre-Inca of Peru, there is no written language at Tiwanaku, and together with certain astronomical alignments, this is one reason why Arthur Poznansky made the claim that this site was 11,000 to 17,000 years old. But this is extremely unlikely, because the site's oldest radiocarbon date is 1580 BC, and even this has been proved unreliable, and the general consensus from detailed excavations and scientific studies is that the site is no older than between 200 and 300 BC, but with the most likely date of origin being 110 AD. This date is supported by the fact that there is a lack of ceramics from any earlier period. Structures at Tiwanaku include the famous Akapana, Akapana East, the Kalasasea and of course the famous Pumapunku, the latter thought by Joseph Davidovitz to have been formed from some kind of geopolymer due to the discovery of organic matter inside the crystalline igneous rock, but this can be explained if the blocks at Pumapunku were subject to extreme temperatures at some time in history, like we see at ancient vitrified forts that are found across northern Europe. I'll do videos on the specific structures at Tiwanaku in the future, as this video is really just an introduction and overview. Arguably the most famous structure at Tiwanaku is the Gateway of the Sun, a huge monolith that is carved in the form of an arch. It's nearly 10 feet tall and 13 foot wide, and although it now displays a huge crack, it was carved from one piece of stone that weighed around 10 tons. The carvings on the gateway have a number of interpretations, including astronomical, astrological, and also calendrical in function. Some believe that the central figure of the gateway is the sun god, others have linked it to the pre-Inca and Inca creation god Viracocha, and some think it could be Tunupa, a weather god in the Amara culture. Some call the deity the gateway god or staff god, who they believe provided rain, lightning and thunder to the lands of the Titicaca Basin. Either way, this god, most likely Viracocha, is prominent in later cultures that are believed to have originated at Tiwanaku. Interestingly, the mythological emergence of the creator gods at Lake Titicaca is the foundation of the Tiwanaku religious belief. Some people have also compared the creator god Viracocha to gods of far older cultures that are found across the world. 
everybody that has been to the site or looked at images and video notes the skill of architectural construction at Tiwanaku. They did have knowledge of mathematics, scaling factors, angles and ratios, not to mention the exquisite stone cutting and drilling techniques. A bit like Lego, blocks were often cut to a similar shape but different scales, and then fitted together according to a plan. Apparently, as the population grew, people had their own specialisms, from stonemasons, potters, jewellery makers, textile workers, and so on. The elite controlled all economic outputs and provided the common folk with everything they needed to complete their job. There was no money or markets, but a hierarchy that controlled and developed society. The elite class lived inside four walls surrounded by a moat, creating the image of a sacred island. Inside there were many images devoted to human origin that the commoners could not see. They could only ever enter this complex for ceremonial purposes as it was looked on as a holy shrine. It is worth noting that a lot of what we see at Tiwanaku has been reconstructed. The original large stones of the Kalasasea would have maybe resembled a more Stonehenge-like structure, large stones spaced evenly apart. In more recent times, new walls have been built around Kalasasea, an attempt at a reconstruction, but this does not display the same high quality stonework that was once present at the site. The Gateway of the Sun is also now in the Kalasasea, and this was likely moved from its original location. Many believe that Tiwanaku had an empire that extended outside of the Altiplano area and into Peru, and excavations at the Omo settlements show a similar architectural style with similar types of temple and a terraced mound. Many restoration projects over the years have not actually helped the site, and it is quite different to how it once looked, and even the 2009 state-sponsored restoration at the Acapana Pyramid was stopped due to a complaint from UNESCO. The site was not being restored correctly. There are still unknown structures immediately around Tiwanaku, found with the use of drones and LiDAR technology, Structures that span more than 400 hectares of land and include more than 100 large circular and rectangular structures and also stone temples. I'll discuss the archaeology of Tiwanaku in more detail in future videos, but now I want to read the earliest report on Tiwanaku by Pedro Cesar de Leon that I watched on Chuck's channel CF App 7865 only today. I'll link to his video in the description below because he also shows some fantastic old photographs and he also gives you an idea of the scale of the site via Google Earth. Now, Pedro Cesar de Leon was a Spanish conquistador and chronicler who lived between 1520 and 1554, so although he had no archaeological understanding of Tiwanaku and also no context, it is certainly worth listening to his words, because it's the earliest account we have on this famous site, with his only real bias being his religion. So, in the first part of his Chronicle of Peru, translated by Clements Markham, Pedro Cesar de Leon says this of Tiwanaku. Tiwanaku is not a very large village, but it is celebrated for the great edifices near it, which are certainly things worth seeing. Near the buildings there is a hill made by the hands of men, on great foundations of stone. Beyond this hill there are two stone idols of the human shape and figure, the features very skillfully carved so that they appear to have been done by the hand of some great master. They are so large that they seem like small giants, and it is clear that they have on a sort of clothing different from those worn by the natives of these parts. They seem to have some ornaments on their heads. Near these stone statues there is another building. Their antiquity and the want of letters are the causes why it is not known who built such vast foundations, and how much time has since elapsed. For at present there is only a wall very well built, and which must have been standing for many ages. Some of the stones are much worn. At this part, there are stones of such enormous size that it causes wonder to think of them, and to reflect how human force can be sufficed to move them to the place where we see them, being so large. Many of these stones are carved in different ways, some of them having the shape of the human body, which must have been their idols. 
Near the wall there are many holes and hollow places in the ground. In another, more to the westward, there are other ancient remains, among them many doorways, with their jams, lintels and thresholds all of one stone. But what I noted most particularly when I wandered about over these ruins writing down what I saw was that from these great doorways there came out other still larger stones, upon which the doorways were formed, some of them 30 feet broad, 15 or more long and 6 in thickness. The whole of this, with the doorway and its jams and lintel, was all one single stone. The work is one of grandeur and magnificence when well considered. For myself, I failed to understand with what instruments or tools it could have been done, for it is very certain that before these great stones could be brought to perfection and left as we see them, the tools must have been much better than those now used by the Indians. It is to be noted, from what now appears of these edifices, that they were not completed, for there is nothing but these portals, and other stones of strange bigness which I saw, some of them shaped and dressed ready to be placed on the edifice, which was a little on one side. Here there was a great idol of stone, which must have been placed there to be worshipped. It is rumoured that some gold was found near this idol, and all round there are more stones, large and small, all dressed and fitted like those already described. There are other things to be said concerning Tiwanaku which I pass over, concluding with a statement of my belief that this ruin is the most ancient in all Peru. It is asserted that these edifices were commenced before the time of the Incas, and I have heard some Indians affirm that the Incas built their grand edifices at Cusco on the plan which they had observed at the wall near these ruins. They even say that the first Incas thought of establishing their court at Tiwanaku. Another remarkable thing is that in all this district there are no quarries whence the numerous stones can have been brought the carrying of which must have required many people. I asked the natives whether these edifices were built in the time of the Incas, and they laughed at the question, affirming that they were made before the Incas ever reigned, but that they could not say who made them. They added that they had heard from their fathers that all we saw was done in one night, and from the fact that they also speak of bearded men on the island of Titicaca, and of others who built the edifice of Vinac, it may perhaps be inferred that before the Incas reigned, there was an intelligent race who came from some unknown part, and who did these things. Being few, and the natives many, they may all have been killed in the wars. Seeing that all these things are hidden from us, we may well say, blessed be the invention of letters, by virtue of which the memory of events endures for many ages, and their fame flies through the universe. We are not ignorant of what we desire to know when we hold letters in our hands, but in this new world of the Indies, as they knew nothing of letters, we are in a state of blindness concerning many things. Apart from these ruins, there are the buildings of the Incas and the house where Manco Inca, the son of Huanca Capac, was born. Close by are the tombs of the native chiefs of this place, as high as towers, broad and square, with doors towards the rising sun. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.